This camera can do what no Fuji, Sony, Nikon, Canon can do. And that's just about anything you can imagine. It can run Instagram. Watch. Now, why would you want to run Instagram on your camera? Some people like to live stream and they want something better than their phone because the phone video kind of looks like crap. So yeah, you can just press plus there, go to live and broadcast with like a real zoom lens with the ability to zoom, interact with people. And it doesn't just stop at live streaming to real apps with no extra connections to a computer or anything because it's running a full version of Android. Pictures can be automatically backed up as you're shooting to Google Photos or Lightroom Classic. And I know some cameras claim to be able to do that, but this one does it 50 times faster because again, it's running really powerful software. And not only does it do it over Wi-Fi, but it has a SIM card. You can connect to cellular networks, which means you can get real-time backups just about anywhere on the planet. And, and nobody can do that. And of course, it has all these benefits that come with running real Android, like photos get GPS tagged. So not only are your photos and videos instantly sent to the cloud, but they're accessible from every other device you have. And they benefit from all the intelligence built into modern apps like Google Photos. Like I can search for photos of dogs and I can find every photo of a dog that I've taken. So let's talk about this camera a little bit. First, it's an interchangeable lens camera with a micro four thirds sensor, which means there's a ton of lenses available for it. And it has, I think the biggest flippy screen available, like look how big that is. And if you're a creator, that means that it's going to be so much easier to see yourself. It also has a real grip on it and it feels great in the hands. Of course, it's got a tripod mount on the bottom, but it also has a tripod mount on the top. I kind of wish they put a tripod mount on the side because you know, so many people do vertical photos and videos nowadays, especially for streaming. And that screen size does matter, especially to professionals, because if you're doing a portrait shoot, your clients are going to see their pictures first on this screen. So a bigger, better quality screen gives a better impression of your skills as a photographer. While the YN455 runs a full version of Android, and I guess you could use it like a phone, it is primarily a camera. And thus you're probably going to be spending a lot of time in the camera app itself. And good news, the camera app works pretty well. You have a proper shutter button where you can take pictures. Focusing is not too bad. The sensor is 20 megapixels, which I know is less than smartphones claim, but these are real megapixels on a big sensor with proper glass. And that's going to produce better images than a phone would. You can insert a micro SD card, but it also has internal storage. And that internal storage is probably going to be reliable and will probably last decades because internal storage doesn't suffer the same damages that SD cards do with taking them in and out. Of course, you can switch between manual aperture priority, shutter priority. You can change the ISO. You can adjust the exposure compensation. And it's all pretty intuitive and well laid out in the app. Now, the app isn't perfect. You can see there's still some untranslated elements of the user interface, despite the fact that I did set this to English. This is funny, but it even has a selfie camera in it. So I guess if you had a telephoto lens attached, you could still take a selfie with it. The video quality is okay. It does 4K at 30 frames per second. And again, that doesn't match the latest smartphones, but it's less expensive than a new smartphone. And again, these are real megapixels, not smartphone megapixels. Believe it or not, this is not the first Android based camera. In fact, this Samsung Galaxy NX won the camera of the decade award for the 20 teens. It was an APS-C camera, so it actually had a bigger sensor, but it was launched in like 2013. So it's super outdated now. This Yongno is a couple of years old, but running a more modern version of Android. And you kind of see how this Android camera infrastructure could really come together to benefit the creator. Now, this isn't a perfect implementation by any means. So I do have some requests for the next generation. First, this should operate as a camera by default. When you turn it on, it should open up the camera app automatically. Right now, you actually have to unlock it until you disable the lock screen, which is fine. And then I had to install a separate app to actually run the camera automatically every time it started up. Ideally, I could press the shutter button there 
and that would always open the camera app, but it doesn't actually do that. But that would be a software change. So I put this out to Yongno as a request to make a few updates. With the YN455, Yongno has really shown what is capable when we put proper software on a good quality camera. There's still a ways to go though. I would love to see better security in it. Right now you can have a locking lock screen, which means your pictures are protected if you lose your camera. That protects your confidentiality, the privacy of the people or things that you might be taking pictures of. It also means that somebody couldn't steal your camera and resell it because they wouldn't be able to unlock it and thus they wouldn't be able to use it. But that security should be a little better integrated. Like you shouldn't have to unlock it every time. You should be able to maybe put your finger on the shutter and have a fingerprint reader in there. We desperately need security for our cameras to reduce the amount of camera theft, which is a real problem and poses a real threat to photographers, but it always needs to be convenient or people won't use it. It does have phone tracking because it has GPS and a cellular connection. It can continually update its location and there is the Google Find app that will allow you to find it just like you could any Android phone. So if somebody did steal it, you might be able to track it down. I would also love to see the next version of this be Elmont because I would love to have a full frame camera with real good software that was constantly connected. So is this the perfect camera? No, but Yongno is showing what they can do and they're doing something the other camera manufacturers can't really figure out. And does it need another generation or at least some software updates to improve it? Yeah, but those updates can come. And in fact, they can come automatically because it is running a real powerful hardware operating system. In the comments down below, let me know what you think. Would you like to see Sony maybe take on an Android operating system? Bye.